we've got a malicious site out there like terms-acc.com. The client wants to connect to it, so it's going to do a typical DNS query here. The DNS server doesn't have it in its cache, so what does DNS servers do? Forward. You're right. So it's going to do uh, an external query, right? So we're going to go out and we're going to reach out to this DNS uh, solution out here, right? To our root and comm servers. Or, yeah, comm servers in this case. <clears throat> so the firewall sees this, and the firewall contains uh, DNS signatures, and it identifies that or knows that that's a, a bad site, right? So we can block it at that point. And then this block gets written into our logs. Now, what log does it get written into? Written into the threat log. Threat log. Now, here's the interesting thing. This sounds so far like a good thing, right? We're stopping, we're interrupting, disrupting the communication to the C2 server. But there's an additional problem here, and that is we don't know who actually is the origin of the query. Because from the firewall's point of view, who is sending the query? The DNS server. The DNS server right here. So that's what gets recorded here in our threat log. So we got 5,000 clients, right? Now we've got to go here to try to locate this. And you can't really go looking through your DNS server logs because I, I think of it as like a, a needle in a haystack of needles. There's just yeah, yeah. so many queries there. So this is what we're going to solve, right? So. Uh, if we're, what we're going to do is we're going to change our action to sinkhole in our rule, okay? So that instead of just blocking and recording to the threat log, we're going to take a different action. And let me use a different color. We're going to do sinkhole now. And what sinkhole does is sinkhole tells the firewall to actually reply to this query. So it's going to reply to this query with a sinkhole address. And so you configure the firewall with the sinkhole address. And Mitch will show us how to do this in a demonstration here in a little bit. I'm just going to put uh, an IP address of X. Uh, we'll do it this way. W, X, Y, and Z, right? Whatever it is. So it could be you know, um, some sort of routable IP address. The firewall comes with a default IP address. Palo Alto Networks, we have an address you can use, but you can put some other routable address. The DNS server takes this, sees it as a response from um, its DNS query, and it's going to pass that IP address onto the client. The client then is going to attempt to connect to that IP address, like so. When it attempts to connect to that IP address, this is the important thing. In addition to configuring sinkhole, you also want to create a rule for that IP address. And this is the part that sometimes gets left out of the conversation when we talk about sinkhole. So you want a rule here that's going to catch traffic going to this IP address. Because you have a separate security policy rule, this is going to now record traffic that hits this rule to what log? I think the traffic log. The traffic log. Let me clean that up. We're going to make a bigger, happier square here. Now we're going to the traffic log, right? And this is going to be a deny rule. And now, who is going to be listed as the source of that traffic? I think it's your skull and crossbones client there. It's going to be the infected client. And what that means is you can simply do a query for your sinkhole address and your traffic log, and it will expose your clients. So the really neat thing about DNS sinkhole is the ability to locate the clients.